Electable tea or deadly poison.
Hey guys, how's it going? Look, um, just before we get into it, you know, cool chatting to a couple of you. Yeah, man, learning, um, learning Madam from Theorem of Beethoven's tutorials as an English speaker, man, it was so hard, hey, like, and it was like the only stuff there was, so I mean, thank God for it, right, otherwise I would have been like completely screwed, um, yeah, and yeah, the fact that now we're in community version as well. So, like, I mean, anybody who's, like, trying to learn this who's not an English speaker, like, not naturally an English speaker, my hat goes off to you. Like, if if I was, like, uh, like for people who aren't naturally Australian or American who have trouble understanding my accent, oh, man, like, s Madam is hard enough as it is. So, like, you know, hats off to you guys. And, like, even being able to install the thing. Like, I heard Euler say one time that... He's more impressed seeing somebody install Manum than actually use Manum. So, you know, if you've installed it and you're and you're using it, then you're pretty much on the right track. Um, you know, I'm just gonna start by saying, let me just close some of this crap here. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna start and say, um, this is probably gonna be my my last shoot on on stream on you know doing it on Twitch. I might I might try and think of another way to to present some stuff. Um, but just, you know, for, for anybody who did or didn't know, like I've got a, I've got a YouTube and, you know, I teach my students there. And so if you see any animations that you want me to share, cause I don't have a GitHub, I don't have any place where I store my code. Um, just because I really can't be, I can't be asked to be honest. But if you like, if you ever see any of it and you go, Oh, I really want that code, you know, please don't like hesitate to go, Oh, I wonder if, you know, Brian. Now, I don't have any activities planned for this shoot. I'm just gonna blast through some, um, some stuff, right? So we pretty much we're using loops in Madam, and this is where, like, to be honest, I'm still sort of learning this myself because I learned Python and Madam at the exact same time, um, and so using loops, I've kind of just become quite familiar with it, you know, within the last couple of months. Um, and it makes a lot of sense and it kind of makes everything programmatic and it makes everything, you know, kind of cool. You can do some really creative stuff if you can get your head around loops. Um, so anyway, the first one that I'm going to go over, it's just like a real basic example, um, is like a random number generator, right? So, and I pretty much just want it to write a number and just put it somewhere on the screen, you know, and I can position it wherever I want by using my, you know, my object orientating on, I'm on Manum, right? So I pretty much, I just want to create something as simple as this. So it looks simple, but it's really not. It's only a couple lines of code, but you've got to really understand what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so I'm going to import a bunch of stuff for my Madam imports, my import NumPy, if I, yeah, I am going to use um, NumPy. And I also need to import random. And this is like a, I don't know, like a thing in Python that helps you just use the random stuff that, that they've got there. Anyway, so dev construct self, we're just going to put this together. And I know the code for this should already be out. Like it should be on, if you go on the Discord on the announce page, you should be able to download it. I've got it as a spoiler, um, just because, I don't know, it kind of looks, kind of looks cool. Uh, anyway, I'm going to have a num generator text. Uh, and I want that to be just some text, right? So I just want to say number generator. Okay, so, and pretty much because I just want number generator and then number to pop up and then move down. Right, so I've got number generator there, and I'm going to put it to the edge uh, up left, right, just like I had it seen before, and I'm going to play that out, right. So I'm just going to say write num gen text. Ah, uh, cool. Okay. Now, apologies if my voice goes. I'm I'm a bit sick at the moment, so if I start croaking and shit like that, I do apologize. Okay. So pretty much we're going to set up our loop and this i equals zero, it's kind of like a variable that we're just going to add in the for loop to help me position stuff. Again, if, you, if you've if you got a more uh, like effective way to do this in Madam, please let me know, but this is kind of my way of trying to problem solve this through. So now I'm going to set up my for loop. So I'm going to say for k in range 10. In other words, I want to do this thing nine times, right? Because we, wait, 
zero, one, two, three. No, we're going to do it ten times because we start at zero and then we go all the way up to nine, which is one before ten. So yeah, we will do it ten times. And I'm going to create this variable a, and so this is where my random is going to come in. So I'm using um, numpy of random and normal. So this is taking a random there. It's a random number generation, uh, and normal is. I'm taking a number from the normal distribution, which you know it's got a, a mean and a standard deviation. If you're familiar with that, uh, and so loc, uh, which is my mean, I'm going to say the mean is 100, and uh, scale is the standard deviation, which I'm going to call 15. Right. So that's kind of like the standard one for IQ, um, and so this is going to be randomly selecting a number from normal distribution for. IQ, right? Because IQ has got a mean of 100 um, and, uh, I, uh, and a standard deviation of 15. And pretty much I want this number. Um, I want to create a number which is going to be de a decimal number, right? And I want that to have no decimal places, so num of a decimal places. I really could use integer here, um, but I'm not going to um, because it, like this could pull out um, uh, what do you call from the normal distribution? It could pull out a number with many. Um, uh, it could pull out what do you call a a non-integer? Uh, a, a, yeah, a number that's not an integer. So I'm just going to use decimal number so I don't run into any problems. I'm going to say set the value to be a. So I'm creating a decimal number that's going to be equal to this value of a. And I'm setting this up within the for loop because I want this to happen over and over and over again, um, rather than have to create it myself like ten times. Um, and then I'm going to go num next to, and I want it to be num, next to num generation uh, generator text, which is the thing I made initially. Uh, and I want it to be to the right. And then I'm going to self play right number or num, right? Self play and then num animate uh, to edge down left. So I want the number to then go down to the edge, and then after that, I want to shift it to the right times i, okay? Where at the moment, I'll be shifting it i is equal to zero, but then within this for loop, I'm gonna say i plus equals 1.3, and then after that, self weight. So really, what I'm telling, um, what I'm telling Madam to do here within Python is go, look, create a number generator, which is like some text, uh, play it, so write it out, then we've got this variable i is equal to zero, and I'm creating a for loop. So pretty much what's going to happen here is it's going. To, okay, I'm going to I'm going to do this ten times. Right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create this a here is going to become the value of some random number from the normal distribution. Um, and I, I mean I picked this because it's kind of just cool to show you where the mean is a hundred. The average is 100 and the standard deviation is 15 so it's going to select some random number and then I'm, I'm creating a decimal number and I'm assigning it that value so like Python will think of some random number and it get, it'll get some random number from that distribution and then I'm saying okay madam now set whatever that random number is set it as the decimal number mobject right and then move that mobject next to there write it out and then shift it down okay and then it does that once in the for loop and then I go I within this for loop plus 1.3. And then so it goes, okay, now I've done that once. And then in the for loop, it'll go, I need to do this 10 times. So it'll go through and then it'll do it another time. Right? This is how for loop works. It'll go through another time and it'll go through that whole process again of picking another random number, sets that to that value, puts it next there, plays it through. And then I, which is now equal to 1.3, shifts it 1.3 and then I plus equals 1.3. So then the next time that it goes through, it'll shift it 2.6, then 3.9, and 5.2, then so on and so forth. So there's a little bit of problem solving going on there, which is kind of cool. So anyway, we can. Ah, oh, hang on, seven lake. There we go, lake seven, uh, and we're just going to run this and see what it looks like. There shouldn't be any errors here. There is. For, uh -huh, for K in range. There you go. There's always an error. There is always an error. Thank you. Um, thanks, Jason B. You're spot on. You got it before I could even run it. There you go. 
and so it'll go through, it'll play this out a couple of times because, you know, it's playing out the animation 10, well, it's playing like 20 animations here. Well, it'll actually play like 21 or something because we're playing each of these, tw there's like two things to play within the for loop. Okay, and so that's exactly as we'd expect, right? Sweet, sweet. We watch it go through. So we can create like some sort of a number generator. And now this might be useful to have as like part of an animation that you want. All right, yeah, you're... You're a smart man, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So we can create something like that, which is, again, pretty cool. Actually, I'm gonna, like, actually, I'm gonna call this one um, Mobject Loop. And again, this is insane. So we're gonna move on to something new here, right? Um, and I mean, look, if you've got any questions, like, just go, hang on, Brian, what? the hell is that component to the code there, right? That's the beauty of watching it live. Like you can just pause me and I'll have a look and go, okay, hang on, let me just explain such and such as question. Um, but chances are I'm not that I'm not that smart. So I'll probably just go, oh, good question. If somebody knows the answer, let us know. Um, anyway, we're going to create, now the next one that we're going to look for is something like this. So sometimes you might want to create a, a bunch of objects, like a whole series of them. And instead of writing it out, like, you know, object one, object two, object three, and writing it out a whole list of times, and maybe you want to reposition them, and you know, in a programmatic sense as well. Um, again, we can use a for loop for that. It just, it, like, it's just efficient and it saves a lot of time. So let's say you wanted to create something like this. I have no idea why, but let's say you did. Uh, so let's let's get to that. Let's get to that. So now I'm going to create a couple of variables here. I'm going to say i is equal to zero and k is equal to zero. So there, there's some variables I'm going to use. I'm going to say k in range of 10. So I'm setting up my um, for loop straight away, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain these initial variables that I've created in a second because they're just going to help me position stuff around. So we say circ is equal to circle. So this is the object circle, um, and I want to make it nice. I'm going to use fill color equals blue. Uh, sheen factor is equal to uh, 0.5. Fill opacity is equal to unknown is 0 0.5. Um, and let's say radius, I don't want it to be too big, so I'm gonna say 0. Uh, 0. 0.5 there. Uh, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna put this to the edge, to edge of down right. So I'm gonna create a circle. This first one is gonna be down to the right. Uh, now I'm gonna create a number, which is pretty much I just want to list off how many objects that I've got here. So this is why I've got two, um, and this is gonna be equal to a decimal number probably should call this integer, but I just like decimal number. It's got more versatility. That's a number of decimal places. Because if you want it to be an integer, you just say it's got zero decimal places and it'll round it to the closest integer. Uh, set value to be K. Right now, again, I could use integer, but I like decimal number. Uh, then I'm gonna go K plus equals one. So every time this goes through programmatically, K will be one, then it'll be two, then it'll be three, then it'll be four, then blah, 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 blah. blah. So that'll come off nicely. Uh, now I'm going to say self play, self play, draw border, then fill. And I'm going to do that with the circle. Okay. Uh, what I'm also going to do simultaneously is I'm going to go circ animate uh, shift. So I want to move this and I'm going to go up times I plus left times i. So that'll give it like a diagonal effect there. Um, so I'm going to draw the border and fill it and simultaneously shift it to where it, um, where it needs to be. And I want this to like happen pretty pretty fast. I'm going to say runtime is equal to 0 0.2 just so it can render a little faster. Um, which is what you'll notice if you have a lot of things in a for loop and you've got them to have a runtime of a second. It's pretty much doing a whole lot of um, things. Um, flipping back to like 17 for a moment. Having generated your 10 numbers, how would you get back to your first number you generated, say, recolor it? Um, <laughs> fantastic question. Fantastic question. Look, I'd imagine it would have something to do with collecting num as an index, um, but I don't actually know the answer. Well, like, once again, I told you this is going to happen. I don't actually know the answer. Like, this is the sort of question that I go, like, I'd stumble across it, as I'm trying to code out one of my programs and go, oh, I wish I could do that. 
and then I'd have a play around with it, get a couple of errors, and then eventually figure it out. But I'd imagine it would go something along the lines of num of zero, right? And I might just say set color um, to be, I don't know, yellow or something like that um, if I wanted to change it after, right? Or I could actually animate it, maybe like self play. Um, uh, what do you call it? Num dot animate dot set color to be yellow. Let's say, actually, you know what? Let's just test it. Does that even work? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm now curious. I have, I have a suspicion it won't. I have a suspicion it won't. Um, you'd have to let me play around with this a little bit more and see if it would work. Oh, did that actually work? Let's go to the end. Oh, uh, no, that... I don't know what the hell... What the fuck did that... Um, look, yeah. Yeah, good question, man. I would I would seriously just... I'd seriously play with it. Um, I'd imagine it would just be... I, I could... Wait, what did Jason say there? Collect it into a list. Uh -huh. Yeah, that makes great sense. Yeah, so I just have a play around with that. Um, oh, I don't... Wait, I think I know why... Ah, uh, okay. Uh, you know what? Not right now. Not right now. Um, no, good qu Again, like, I like seeing a question like that. Yeah, I called the first character of the last number. I think it had to do with the fact that num, the number of, like, the number had three digits and I, zero would be the array of the first digit it, if for some reason it had its own array. Um, I did not expect that to happen. That's why I was so surprised. But, yeah, cool. Um, good question. To be honest, I'm probably going to, once the stream ends, I'm actually probably going to play around with that and see if I can figure it out. Because I'm now very curious. I'm now very curious. But, no, I like I like the detour. That's good. I, I froth a good detour. Um, and I like a good question like that because it really sparks, really stimulates my imagination. Um, anyway, we'll go to this, this mob object loop here um, where I'm going to play it out. And to be honest, this is pretty much it because then after this, I'm just going to self-play right the number because the number here is just the decimal number which is showing like how many times um like which object i'm up to it's kind of just tracking it and then i'm just going to say num animate next to and circ uh to the left i want it to the left yes i do uh and i want this to have a runtime of i don't know 0 0.3 because i don't want to sit around and wait for too long uh and then hang on and then now I need to go i plus equals 0 0.75, um, some arbitrary number. So the next time it goes through the loop, it'll shift it up and a bit. And then the next time it'll shift it up and a bit and up and a bit and up and a bit and so on. Right. And after that, I'll self dot wait. And we'll play this out. So we've got madam uh, seven like mobject loop pm. So this should just kind of play out nicely. Yeah, exactly as I want it. If I want to slow it down, I just change the runtime. Um, you know, but that's kind of nice. So I want to get to some more complex stuff. So that's just the basics of like structuring it out. You can use a for loop. You can put objects in a for loop. If you look at the source code that Grant uses, like he's a freaking genius and he manages to do this with like everything that he creates and then we just kind of pull from it. Um, but let's say we want to create something that he hasn't got as a template. Uh, for example, the arc, uh, like an arc integral. So where you're trying to find the arc length of the, the length of a function, like of the line of the function. Um, which if you did, you know, uh, much, uh, much maths at university, you'd, you'd, you'd remember doing something like this. Anyway, um, some of this I've got pre-prepared, okay, just because, and pretty much I'll show you what I want it to look like. So I want like some axis to pop up, okay, cool. Um, I know how to do that, that's from lecture two. I want there to be a function there. And I want to programmatically show as the length between the two um, points gets smaller, I'm going to get a better and better approximation for uh, the integral uh, for the arc length. Right now, I could obviously I could do a bit more to this. You know, I could elaborate more if I was going to show my understanding. But just as the basics 
I just want to make something like this uh, come to life. So like there's a couple things, there's like a DX here, it's got a value tracker for like that number there because that number was changing. Um, I've got to have a number plane here with a graph and then the for loop comes in with like creating all these lines here because obviously if I wanted to manually do it, to be honest, I don't even think you can manually do it because I'm using a value tracker. So we've got to create it as a function. Um, but how I many no frames dropped? That's very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go to my arc integrals here, and I'm gonna I've got this plane already sorted with the graph that I want. So actually, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna pinch the whole lot here because I, I don't want to explain over it. I just like this should be this should be cruisy days. This should be happy stuff. And to clean up the code, I'm just going to make that a bit smaller. And so I've got my plane. I'm, you know, creating a number plane based from the config. I'm moving it, you know, moving the origin. And then I'm calling this graph, which is some cubic, right, between some bounds and it's purple. Wait. Okay, cool. So I'm not really, I'm not going to elaborate on that. That's just, that's just going to be there. Now here is kind of where we've, we're going to create our own functions. So okay, def get line integral get line integral and you, you can see I've already created it uh, and it's going to intake an x point it's going to go to a graph uh, it's going to have a dx value of 1 initially um, it's going to inherit an x minimum value and it's going to inherit an x maximum value okay now where did I learn to do this to be honest I just looked at Grant's code um, for like rhyme and sums and learn from there to be completely honest anyway I'm gonna have a bunch of dots so they're gonna be their own thing or they're gonna be a V group uh, and I'm gonna have a bunch of lines that's gonna be its own vector group of stuff uh, and I'm gonna have result which is equal to the vector group uh, containing the dots and the lines <coughs> okay so now I'm going to have some kind of an X range and this is going to be equal to now I'm going to go NP a range which is kind of like saying it's a range like in Python there's range which and you can go from like 0 to 5 in increments of 1 but the problem with range is that it only takes in integers NP a range takes in um, non integers so anyway here we want to go from an X minimum to an X maximum and we want to go up um, to some dx value there, right? Now we also want to make some colors here. So I'm going to say colors. Now again, this one, to be honest, I've completely ripped it from Grant. So some of this coding might be a bit outdated, but actually still works. Um, color gradient, and we're going to go blue underscore b um, up to green underscore b. Again, some of it might be outdated here. Uh, and we've got the length of x range. Okay, now for the for loop. So I'm going to say for x and color because I want to grab them both in uh, the zip of x range and colors. So I'm pretty much structuring a for loop out here where I'm saying for x, whatever it's going to be, and color in this stuff here. So I'm going to be pinching it from there. Um, now I'm going to create some stuff. So P1, I want it to be equal to a dot. Um, I'm going to scale it down 0.7 and I'm going to move to plane plane dot input to graph point which is pretty much like towards to point uh, plane dot input to graph point yes and I'm going to take it from x up to the graph so whatever x point so like for x so every x point in this loop it's going to input it's going to go up to the graph um, and I'm going to create a second point, which is dot, uh, scale it down again to 0 0.7, and I'm going to move this one to, and you can probably guess it, it's plain input to graph point of x plus dx to that same graph. So I've got two points here. I'm going to have a dot and a second dot where it's going to hit the, um, the function, which is graph. That, that's why I've got this one. It's graph. Okay, but it would really inherit any graph so long as I defined, you know, which function I want to hit. Um, and it's going to go from x to dx. And it's going to do this programmatically. So it's going to fill out a whole bunch depending on what my x minimum is, my x maximum is, and my dx value is. 
Okay, so I'm going to say dots add p1, p2. So pretty much here what I'm saying is for every single element in this for loop, just keep adding these um, to the vector group of dots that I've originally made here. And then I'm going to say dots set fill to color, uh, colors, sorry, colors. And I want the opacity, just lower it to like 0 0.8. I don't know. I could change, you know, I could kind of make that its own variable, but I'll be asked. Uh, then we say line is e is equal to line. And I want this to go from P1 to P2. Actually, no, hang on. A little bit better here. P1 dot get center. Just so, you know, if there's any error with where it might have been hitting the edge, I'm saying no, get it from that dot center all the way to this one dot get center. So this is going to return a line from the two points there, which is exactly what I want to do with this line integral. Stroke color is equal to red. Stroke width is equal to, is equal to f uh, five. So I want to make it a bit thick. Uh, and then I'm going to go lines dot add line uh, dot add a line. So I'm saying oh add every line to the vector group of lines there. And the result is all of that stuff there. So this is going to programmatically create this as a for loop, and I'm going to return, because this is a function of getting line integral, I return the result. And the result con contains the dots and the lines. So it's gonna programmatically go through, and um, depending on whatever my x values are, or my dx values are, it's, it's gonna give me all of those. So I've created a nice function there that I can now call whenever I want. So now I'm going to use a value tracker and I'm going to use some always red raw stuff here. So value tracker is equal to two and that's really, I'm going to use this to track the DX value because now this is a function. So I can constantly update this function using always red raw, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to say line integral is equal to always red raw of lambda such that we're going to get line integral uh, and I want x to equal zero. That's where I want to start from. A graph, graph is equal to graph. The, this graph here. Okay. If I called this, if I called this func, I would say graph is equal to func. But I, I don't want to do that. I want to keep it graph because that's kind of my own notation. Uh, dx is equal to k dot get value. So now I'm going to have a value tracker on this, which is kind of cool. Uh, x minimum goes from zero, x maximum goes up to five. Okay, and that should be it there. Now I also wanted to add that thing in the top corner, which was kind of like a... Oh cool, thanks thanks, Jason for doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check that out and I'm actually gonna um, try and suss it out after this, to be honest. So thank you for doing that for Glenn, but I will also be um, investigating that myself, so thank you. Um, anyway, I wanted this value text uh, to be math text, and I pretty much just want this to track the dx value. So dx is equal to uh, two edge up left. Okay, and I want to have a value which is equal to a, a decimal. Actually, I'm going to do this with always red raw of lambda such that it's going to be a decimal number which I'm going to have number of des decimal places. And I've got this always red rule because I want this decimal number to constantly be updating. So I just add always red rule to it, which is, uh, and I want it to have two decimal places. Uh, and I want it to be next to uh, the point value text. And I want it to set the value uh, to be k dot get value. Uh, and that really should be it. Yeah, you're spot on there, Glenn. Yeah, so for every like intermediate point, there'll be another dot, but you won't be able to tell because it'll be at the exact same spot. So I guess, like if you know a way to do that, I guess more, more efficiently, so it renders quicker, let me know. Um, because I don't, I don't, I don't actually know. Um, maybe I probably like shouldn't add dot two 
so that it just takes dot one and keeps doing that. I could do it that way. Yeah, again, I'd probably just have a little play around with it and get a couple of errors and see how I go there. Um, but now I'm just going to play this stuff here. So I'm going to say show creation of the int align integral, which is this thing here that I've made. Uh, I'm going to self add just the value text and the value and then we're going to self play k.animate.set value to be 0 0.1 uh, and I want the runtime to be something like I don't know 7 just so we can kind of see an action and then self wait and then we're going to see what this looks like here uh, what's this one called arc integration hopefully no errors duplicate in the function I've typed X minimum twice why uh, because I'm an idiot that's why that's better Wait, does that mean for each? No, just know how to ask all questions. <laughs> Wait, what the f Wait, what the hell's wrong with this? Oh, set value, not set val, set value. You know, I tell you what. I'm a pretty aggressive person, but when I see that error come up, you could probably see like a little twitch in my eye. I was like, fucking what? <laughs> like, not happy. Don't want to see that. I hate errors. All my hard work, the terminal was like, fuck you. Not cool. <laughs> and I'm sure you've experienced it as well. It's like, it's just, it's rather unpleasant to be told that um, you're an incompetent fool who needs to write more accurate code. Anyway, we'll wait for this to render. We'll wait for this to render. And then I'm pretty much... So hopefully that was clear. Like, again, look, I get this is complicated. I'm pretty much trying to integrate everything that I've, um, I've kind of taught over, last, over the other six lectures. So, like, there's creating my own function, using value trackers, um, creating a graph, like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, but really like to create the animation, you've got to integrate everything together. So, um, so hopefully like this is making a bit of sense, like everything you've been doing over the past couple of weeks, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's pretty straightforward. And then now when we get to doing this stuff, which is like some programmatic for loops, you're probably like, hmm, okay, all right. I can see how this gets a bit complicated. And again, like if you ask me a question like, oh, how would I do such and such? I'd have to programmatically think it out in my head. Like, hmm, how the hell do you actually do that? Okay, so function's nice. Comes up there. Oh, uh, what's going on there? Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> what happened there? Let me have a think. Get line integral. Lines dot result is that return the result lines add dots add line line cool if anybody can see it uh, let me know mate hmm have I copied it everything in it perfectly from here because I had it working before. Get line integral. That is that thing, right? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, hang on. This is exactly why. So I set in the function that dx has to be equal to one, which I shouldn't do. I should say it's equal to none. So I can let it be whatever value I want it to be, whatever I set it to be. Does that change it? It should. Hmm. 
is that called plane? Yeah. Plane input to graph point. Yeah. The hell? Always read raw, yeah, because I want it to always interpret line integral. Yes. Get line integral. X starts at zero. Sure. Yeah, it is K. Yeah, it goes from zero to five. Very confusing. How do I do it in this code? Why oh, use the X equals one there? What the hell? Oh, I know exactly, oh, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know exactly, I know exactly what I've done wrong, I know exactly what I've done wrong, I did the exact same thing I did before with X minimum twice, I wrote out twice, it should be X max, I'm such a bloody idiot, you stupid, okay, that's it, that was the one, mm. got it, how annoying, Annoying. You have to. We have to watch it render one more time. Yeah, that was it. Okay. So look, there. I like. I kind of. I kind of like displaying that because. <sighs> That's how you code. That's how you code. You never ever get it right first time. I mean, look. I'm not a programmer. I'm a. I'm a school teacher. I don't know how to code. Well. I just like to solve problems. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Finn, Glenn, I know, I know. Errors are the best education. All of your learning will come from frustration, right? Because <clears throat> you're frustrated, you're like, what? Something, something I did was wrong? <laughs> That's how you learn, yeah. You gotta laugh it off. You gotta laugh it off. Alright, come on. Keep keep pumping through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you will be learning a lot. Yep. There's no doubt. There's a hundred percent there's no doubt. I made so many errors. The amount of times that I'd like when I was starting to code and starting to learn this stuff, I would like I would I would code it and then I'd run it. And then there'd be an error, and then I'd spend like an hour fixing up an error, and then like it would like it wouldn't even work, and I'd just go to bed pissed off. And then I'd like sleep, and then in my dream, like some shit would happen, and I'm like, oh, that's where the error is. And so, but you know, most of the time that wouldn't happen. Sometimes that would happen, and you know, and I'd kind of get up and and fix it and run it, and then hooray hurrah, right? Everything would be good. So this should show. Aha! There it is. Happy days. Okay, so that's that's what was wrong. There was nothing programmatically wrong. It's just the fact that I um I showed X min and X max. So there you go. So that's that's the line integral. Um, again, like I don't know. There's nothing cool about the fact that I made a line integral. I just made it because I was trying to like think of something that Grant hasn't done. Like he's done friggin' everything. Um. Now there's one more. Look, there's a there's a guy on YouTube. His name is the Lazy Channel or something like that. Um, he's created a better way to kind of do this. But so let's say we want to create some kind of a network. Now I kind of like this stuff because I'm a psychology. I've got a psychology background, and so neuroplasticity is um is something that I quite like. You know, with with repeated with repeated errors and repeated trials, um, your your neurons have a stronger connection, and so it's kind of nice to have a tangible feel. So let's say I wanted to create something like this. Now again, this would be awful without doing it programmatically because like you've got to make a whole bunch of circles then you've got to make a whole bunch of lines and like I would preferably have them to be random, right? And so anyway, I would also like it to update. So I want to be using this as a function and have always red raw. So I've got a lot of shit to figure out here and so I've like I've got my answers on the side 
um, just in case I like manage to really screw everything up. But let's go ahead and do this. So we're gonna call this one. We're gonna call this one neuroplasticity. And this is scene, right? And so this one is a one of my favorite animations to kind of dream up of, even though it's probably not that fantastic. Um, but I like I like the brain and I like neurons, so it's kind of nice to visualize it. Anyway, get a def get random neural network. So I want to create something like this. And so this is going to input a number of neurons. And again, this is stuff that I've just made. I'm going to say at the moment, it's equal to none. Uh, I'm going to say number of layers. Again, this is going to be equal to none. Uh, I'm going to have some strength, again, which is equal to none. And I'm going to have a multiple. Now, I, I was kind of playing around with this and the multiple is probably a stupid thing, but I don't really care. I'm just going to keep going with it. If I was fine-tuning this for a video, I'd, I'd probably, like, actually fix it a little bit. Hey, Lerner. How's it going, man? I hope you're um, you're managing to keep up because I'm finishing on this one last... This one last um, thing to show you, and to be honest, it's pretty complicated. So, we're in for a ride. We'll see if we can get it done in 20 minutes. Anyway, R is equal to zero. That's what I'm going to... end Zero, not O. <coughs> That's what I want it initially to be. And now I'm going to have layers is equal to some vector group. And I'm going to add my layers to this vector group. Anyway, so I'm going to say for layer in a range of number of layers. So I'm pretty much, I want to create a for loop depending on the number of layers that I've got, I want it to show that many, right? So the number of layers is is kind of like, instead of having like four or five or six or two, depending on how many layers I input, it'll just do it um, nicely like that. And so I'm gonna say new layer is equal to, now I wanna have a vector group of objects. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna new layer is equal to the vector group which contains a circle, which has got a radius, is equal to uh, 0 0.25, fill, color is equal to blue or something like that. Uh, fill opacity is equal to 0 0.75. Sheen factor is equal to 0 0.5. I don't know why I like sheen factor. I learned it recently and it's kind of cool. Sheen direction is equal to up left. So you can kind of play around with that if you want. Uh, stroke width is equal to uh, 0 0.5 and stroke color is equal to white. Okay, and I'm going to say this is 4k in range of number of neurons. So there's, a, there's actually a bit to explain with what I've actually done here. So I'm saying a layer of neurons is going to be a vector group of circles, and circles is what I'm using to represent a single, a singular neuron. So we're going to have a layer of, and I've got a vector group of them because I want to, I want to create many of them. And I'm saying create for k in range of the number of neurons is going to create that many neurons. So if I set number of neurons equal to five, it's going to give me five circles, and that will be defined as a layer. And then I'm going to then programmatically say, well, for the number of layers, this is going to do this such an amount of times. Got it? <laughs> cool. So we'll move on from there. And then here, I'm going to say new layer dot arrange. So at the moment, like it's just got all the circles like in like one big stack. And so I just want to arrange them uh, down a buff of 0 0.3. So instead of having them there, I want to just go whoosh, list them out. It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Um, which is nice. And I'm going to say shift right times by r plus 0 0.8. Now, why have I got it in brackets? Because I want it to be 0. Point, I don't know. To be honest, I can't remember. But it's just programmatically, I'm going to shift the number of layers uh, sorry, I'm going to shift the layer along some amount for depending on how many I've got there. Uh, then I'm going to go R plus plus equals 0 0.8 layers dot add new layer. 
so that there, that's creating the the like the neuron structure itself, right? So the neuron um, network there. Now I want to create the lines, which is going to kind of represent the 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 connection between the neurons. Let's say I'm just going to say lines. Is, wait, is this in my for loop? No, it's not. Lines is equal to vector group. Okay, and now I'm going to say b is equal to zero. I'm just going to create some other thing. Now I'm going to create my own for loop. So this is all. This is still within the definition of the neural network. So I'm going to have a number of layers, and then I'm going to have the lines here. So I'm going to say for line, for line in range of number of layers subtract one, because I want it to start at zero and end at the the second sorry i want it to start at zero and then go all the way through to if i've got five layers i want it to end at the fourth one there um and okay so new lion lion set is equal to the vector group and again okay this one's going to get complicated so i really like I really want you to kind of concentrate in for this here. So now I'm going to create some lines here, okay? So the vector group of lines is going to go from layers of B, right? And it's going to go random.randint from 0 up to number of neurons minus 1, comma layers b plus one and I'll, I'll explain this in a second random dot rand int from uh, zero to number of neurons minus one comma stroke color is equal to green stroke width is equal to 1.5 1.5 stroke opacity is equal to strength 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 is that the same strength have I spelt it correctly yeah it is okay wait hang on this should be back there four and then I want to create Okay, so let's talk this through. So I'm going to create a, a vector group which is containing a bunch of lines, right? So pretty much I want the line to go from layers, so this layer here, starting at B. Now B is the first index of the layer, so I'm using some arrays here. Now those of you who are not comfortable in Python, to be honest, you might as well just like friggin' close the laptop because you, it's just not really going to make much sense if you're not too comfortable with it. But you got to learn some point. So like why not use this as a vehicle to try and figure it out. So I want it to go from inherit from layers, which will be um, containing the vector group, which is the layer of neurons. And I want it to inherit the first one. So we're going to have some list and some network. I want it to start at the very first component of the layers. And then in that layer... I want it to go from some random integer from zero to the number of neurons. I want it to hit some random one and then end up B plus one. So the next layer over to go to some other random neuron there. So I want it to go from layer one to layer two, hitting some random neuron in layer one to some other random neuron in layer two. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm using random dot random in rand integer. It's just saying pick a random integer from zero up to um, number of neurons minus one. Okay, and then I'm, I want the you know the line color to be green, stroke width of 1.5, the opacity to be equal to the strength. So pretty much I want the line to look fuller if the strength is higher. And then I'm saying for k in range. Now I've got a rounder the number here, or I could use um, np. Oh no, wait, could I do that? No, I can't because I need to have an integer number of these lines here because you can't have a decimal number of an object you've got to have a whole number so we say in range and round it to the nearest integer which is strength 
multiplied by multiple. And so again, those are just parameters I've, like I've made up. Okay, and then in the for loop here, I'm going to say b plus equals 1. Okay, and now I'm ready to return. Oh wait, no I'm not. I'm ready to have result is equal to the vector group containing the lines and the layers. And now I'm going to return the result. And so I've created one big, let me lower the terminal here so we can see some stuff that's happening. So I've created one big thing here, which is the neural, getting some random neural network. And so it's going to give me um, some stuff. So we're just going to see it play out here, right? So now let's go, uh, let's say um, NN for neural network is equal to get, wait, is it get random neural network? And I want the number of neurons to be equal to, let's say six, number of layers to be equal to four, uh, so five, okay, whatever. Um, I want the strength to be equal to, like on a scale of zero to one, I want the strength to be 0 0.8. Uh, and I want the multiple, so the num like in the multiple is like the number of lines I want to create. Um, I want it to, let's say like 120, like I want to create heaps of them. It's a self play show creation of neural network and self weight. So hopefully error free, this should go through, but given the track record, there might be an error come up here. And this is neuroplasticity. Probably a stupid name because I'll probably misspell it, but invalid syntax. What has that happened here? Do I need a comma there? I think I do. Hmm, okay. What's wrong with that? Oh, hang on. I need I need to freaking close it off there. That's why. What is wrong with this? Maybe that's better. What the fuck? Create a line that goes from there to there. I'm confused. And I forgot a line here. Lines dot add new line set. So I actually needed to add that to. I needed to add whatever I just made here to my vector group. Otherwise, it's actually not even going to show anything. Okay, that should be good now. What is wrong with this? I need a comma there. Wait, how have I done up here? Yeah. Okay, in that range. Yeah. Oh, I forgot my square here. That's why. I forgot my square bracket there. Wait, what? No, comma. Okay, now it's just like being a pain in the fucking ass. <laughs> it's saying it can't find my file. Nah, it's like, brah, you made too many errors. Fuck you. That's literally what it just said. You made too many errors, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, no way. That's too...
I was writing that self play in the definition. That's why. And I created this in the definition. One more rookie error, and I swear to God. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so show the creation there. That's so it's, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six neurons, five layers, and we should be able to see like all of these lines here that only go from like there to there, or like they only go to the next neuron over. Like we don't have one that goes from like here all the way over to there. So I only wanted the neurons to talk to like their next layer. Um, cool. So I managed to do that. Okay, that's very nice. Um, now moving on with pretty much adding an updater to this. So now let's say, um, let's say I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, I'm just going to double check I'm out of there. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm going to add some stuff here. So week title is equal to text of um, week plasticity. Uh, and I'm going to do two edge up left and I'm gonna shift it over a little bit because it'll have a tiny bit of a buff but I probably could just change the buff um, but that's fine there okay and now I'm gonna create a weak network uh, which is equal to get random neural network uh, and I want the number of neurons to be equal to five let's say like only three layers to be equal to three uh, I want the strength I want it to be low, so like on a 0 0.4 on a scale of 0 to 1, and the multiple to be 20. So like, it's going to be a pretty pathetic uh, network. And I want this to be uh, next to weak title down. Okay, so it's going to put it next to the title, down from it, and it will create some kind of a network. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to go strong title. Strong plasticity to edge. And now I'm going to make this upright. Uh, and again, I might. Do I want to shift this one? Um, no. Now I'm going to create a value tracker here. So K is equal to value tracker. And we're going to start it at 0 0.2 for the strength. Anyway, now we're going to have a strong network is equal to uh, always red raw because now I've created this function I can make it an updating function so now I'm going to make it constantly update with a uh, value tracker so get random neural network of number of neurons is equal to I know let's say in this case we're gonna have eight a number of layers is equal to seven now like you'd have to have a think can you add a value tracker to the number of neurons uh, no all right because you can't have a decimal amount of neurons. You've got to have some integer amount. So you could like program it out, but like by saying round and to the nearest integer and all this shit, but you probably wouldn't do that if you're using a value tracker. Um, I'm going to use my value tracker with the strength. Uh, so I want it to be k.get value. Uh, and here I'm going to have the multiple is equal to a hundred. Okay, next to, and I want to put it next to my strong title, down, that's right, wait, 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 I don't want to close that off there, I want to close it off there. I want all of this to always be red raw. Uh, now I'm going to play it out. It's going to be self play, uh, right, weak, title, right, strong, title. Uh, and then I'm going to self play, draw border, then fill, just because why not, uh, of the weak network okay I'm um, going to self add actually I might just go self weight self add 
I might just actually self play show creation of the strong network and then at this point here I'm saying well, what's gonna happen as I train the network or as I you know study more or whatever however you want to visualize it arcade.animate.set value uh, to be 0.95 because that's tracking the strength so it starts at 0.2 of the strength value now I want to get, get up to 0.95 and a runtime of uh, let's say 12 and then we're gonna self wait and see what this looks like out here any errors probably shouldn't be because of and just to suss it all out. Okay, and like this should take a little while to render because if you have like we're asking um, Madam to do a lot of stuff here, like it's creating a lot of um, objects and Python's having to interpret quite a bit of stuff at, at the same time. So, and then especially on adding a value tracker, so it like constantly has to read this the whole time and reevaluate it. Um, so I'm asking quite a bit of my program here, but that's fine, you know, that's what it's made for. Okay, and so we've got like another minute here. Um, so if anybody's got any questions on on that, um, what I just made there, which was the, the network, again, like this isn't the only way to create it. Like the thing with this is that You've got to have the idea in mind, and then you've got to have the skills in Python and in Madam to be able to make it come to life. And so using for loops is like, it's the most valuable, like being able to create functions and being able to understand using for loops, they're the two most useful things to be able to use to like make stuff in Madam, hands down. There's nothing more useful than those. <coughs> okay, so it's going to take like another minute 30 or something. Um Yeah, again, like if you want if you want to use any of these any of these code, like if you want to copy any of this code that I ever use for any of this stuff um, just send me a message on Discord, okay? And if you want to show me any of the stuff that you're making, I'm thrilled to see it. All right, let me know. I would like to see. Whoop, get rid of that. Yeah, I bet, Glenn, my brain is also pretty full. Um, because I'm trying to remember how to do all this stuff that I made a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so, like, normally it'll render faster than this. It's just because, like, you've got to understand my computer right now is currently um, streaming, rendering. Yeah, it's currently streaming and rendering, and it's a laptop. Like, it's not a desktop or anything. It's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a regular-ass laptop. Mm. So I'm quite impressed with um, how it's going. Cool, so we get our drawn board and fill, that's our weak plasticity, and there's our strong plasticity, and we can see as time moves on, it gets a little stronger, right? That's what that value track is doing. And so, like looking at this, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I really should be shifting this over a little bit so I can see the whole lot. Or maybe I might scale everything down a little bit. Um, but anyway, that's like stuff you do as you tweak. So <laughs> Hopefully you learned something. This is a huge, like this is a hugely dense hour of stuff. Um, but you know, hopefully you learned something with like using the random, the random part of um, oh, they're modules. Yeah, cool. So like the random part of Python, or like being able to use for loops properly. Um, but anyway. For those of you who, you know, watched them all and were here watching this live or like have actually made up to this point, you know, good for you, well done, sticking it out, um, and hopefully, you know, all of it's been useful. So I'm going to sign off for the last time, guys. Uh,
good luck with all of your animations.